Negative thoughts can cause severe consequences in your life from stress to anxiety to even depression. Basically, negative thoughts just make you feel miserable. They can distort your perception of the world and of yourself, keeping you stuck in a life filled with fear and distress. But how on earth do we stop negative thoughts when they feel like they're so stuck in our heads? Uh... The answer to this question is found in the spiritual understanding of what negative thoughts are. When you learn what's happening inside of your head energetically, you'll be able to come out of the negative thinking hamster wheel pretty quickly. In this video, you'll learn what negative thoughts are from a psychological and spiritual perspective. Then we'll get into the top four issues that affect negative thinking the most, and some of these may surprise you. And then I'm going to share one powerful five-step practice to help you come out of negative thinking quickly. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the heart alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell so you get notified as soon as I publish new content. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram where I share weekly tips and advice that you won't find here on YouTube. Before I get into the video, I wanted to let you know that we've added a free workbook as a supplemental resource to this video. It has some major takeaways and also some homework questions that you could use to go deeper in the content that we discussed today. I'm going to leave links to that free workbook in the description box below so you can download after watching this video. On to part one of the video, what are negative thoughts? So um, I'm going to give a few different definitions here, both from psychology and from a spiritual perspective also. From psychology, really what we're going to be talking about is two different types of negative thoughts that seem to be the most bothersome for people. All right. And those two types of negative thoughts are what's called uh, automatic negative thoughts or ANTS, the, the acronym for it. And the other ones are called intrusive thoughts. All right. So these are the two types of thoughts that are really bothersome and can cause a lot of distress in people's lives. So th these are the ones we're going to be discussing here. Now I'm going to give you spiritual definitions, but also psychology definitions. The spiritual definition is really just going to take us deeper into the world of energy so that you can understand what negative thoughts actually do, do to you on an energy level. Okay. So now let's get into the psychology definition of intrusive thoughts. Uh, these are disturbing and alarming thoughts that pop up randomly and stay stuck in your mind, causing significant distress. So the main difference here between, uh, automatic negative thoughts and intrusive thoughts has to do with their intensity. Okay. So intrusive thoughts are much more intense than, uh, automatic negative thoughts and also the stickiness of the thought. Okay. So what this means is that an intrusive thought tends to be stickier in the sense that it feels like it's stuck on, on repeat in your mind and you can't seem to stop it. All right. So that's the main, um, the main difference here between these two. From a spiritual perspective, there really isn't that much of a difference between uh, automatic negative thoughts and intrusive thoughts. So I'm actually going to define them uh, together, but I wanted to let you know that from an energy, the, the energy part of it, the difference between these two really is in the order of magnitude of energy. Okay. So the intrusive thought energetically is more powerful than the automatic negative thought. And that's really is, it's just an order of magnitude. It basically an intrusive thought takes an automatic thought and and just kicks it up a notch. Okay. So here is the spiritual definition of both automatic, uh, negative thoughts and, uh, intrusive thoughts. So these are thoughts that can magnetize and amplify denser emotions and energy within the person's body and electromagnetic fields. Okay. So, <laughs> so what the heck do I even mean by this? All right, let's take this definition and let's break it down in parts. All right. So, so the first part of the part of uh, uh, part of this definition is that uh, these thoughts, these negative thoughts, they can magnetize to them denser emotions. And what this means is they really function like a magnet. They draw to them. They attract to them denser emotions like fear, anger, uh, guilt, shame, uh, these kinds of emotions. All right. 
as they draw these emotions to uh, them, they that's what's causing what's starting to get the the person in distress. Okay, but notice that I that I uh, in this definition I didn't say that the negative thoughts cause the distress. Okay, and this is an important. This may seem like it's semantics, but it's not. This is really going to be breakthrough for you when it comes to being able to stop these negative thoughts later on, because what you can realize is that negative thoughts don't need to cause distress at all. Okay. So they can cause these negative emotions and draw to them these negative emotions, but they don't have to. All right. And this is an important distinction that goes way beyond semantics and it's going to come in handy later, but I just wanted to remind you of that now, before we get into later on in the video, when I start uh, teaching you how to stop this, these negative thinking loops. The next part of the definition is that uh, negative thoughts can amplify the energy uh, of these emotions, of these denser emotions. Okay. So what this means is not only can they magnetize these denser emotions to them and stick to them, but they can also amplify these emotions. And that's why then people start to get really distressed when they have these negative thought loops going on in their mind, because these negative thought loops, they can amplify the energy of the, mo of the emotion, making it feel even more uncomfortable for the person. Okay. So, so that's another aspect of the energy definition. So, so you see negative thoughts magnetize, they can magnetize uh, denser emotions and they can amplify those negative emotions. So now that you're getting the energy understanding of what negative thoughts are now, it makes total sense why they can be so distressing for people because they're amplifying basically the energy of the emotions that make us really uncomfortable. They're magnetizing those emotions. So the person really really can go from a state of calm to a state of distress or anxiety or stress just by having these loops go, these negative loops going on in their head. Now, one last thing about this definition that I wanted to leave, because this is super important for you to remember. Notice that in the definition that I gave in the spiritual definition that I gave of these two types of negative thoughts, I used a really important operating word. That's really going to come in handy. And that's the operating word can. <laughs> okay. So negative thoughts, can amplify energy. Negative thoughts can magnetize denser emotions to them. Okay. This is a really important operating word because can doesn't mean they always do. And they always have to with hundred percent certainty. Okay. And again, this is really going to be a breakthrough for you because when you realize that negative thoughts don't need to magnetize negative emotions or denser emotions, they don't need to amplify those, those uh, negative emotions. That's going to be your road to really coming out of of this kind of negative thinking hamster wheel. All right. So remember that word can doesn't mean they have to On to part two of the video, the four issues that affect negative thinking. All right. So these four issues, this is what really affects negative thinking the most. And what, what, what makes negative thinking actually distressful for people and really uncomfortable for people are these four, these top four issues. The first one is probably the most important of all of them. And that's the emotional response. Okay. <laughs> this one super important. So what I mean here is that negative thinking, it really has no power over you whatsoever, unless it elicits an emotional response on your part. That's when things start to get out of hand. It's not the negative thought itself. It's the emotional response that's being triggered by this negative thought, especially emotions that are involved fear. Okay. So fear is the most important emotion that's triggered by negative thinking loops is fear and fear is it's probably the most powerful emotion that, that brings these negative thoughts, turns them into just random things going through your head into something that's very distressing. And it's very stressful that causes a lot of anxiety. All right. So, so this is the first issue is the emotional response that you have at triggered by the, the negative thoughts, the intrusive thoughts that are going on in your head. So let me give an example of how this actually happens. So let's say you have an intrusive thought. Um, let's give an extreme. I mean, we all have intrusive thoughts and automatic negative thoughts, but let's give an extreme one, you know, like you're walking down the street and you're just really angry at someone or whatever, and you just want to kill them. <laughs> okay. So there's an, there's an intrusive thought. All right. So that thought itself, 
when that thought is triggered, when that negative thought is triggered, it will or can, let me see, I'm using the right words here. It can trigger the emotional response around fear, around shame. You not thinking you're a good person because you just thought that I'm a whore. I must be a horrible person to think this you see. And then the emotions start to cascade. So this emotional response starts to amplify and amplify and amplify. And pretty soon you're not only stuck in the negative loop, but you're stuck in the emotions that have been triggered by that negative thought. Okay. But the million dollar nugget here. Here's the million dollar nugget. Ding, ding. <laughs> the million dollar nugget for you to remember is that you do not need to have an emotional response to a negative thought. <laughs> you don't need to have an emotional response to a negative thought. This may seem common sense, but it's really hard for a lot of us to, to be able to separate the negative thought from the emotional reaction. That's why these negative thoughts are so problematic for us. All right but I wanted to leave this here. You do not have to have an emotional response to a negative thought. Right. And the more that you really internalize these words that you start to understand these words and that you receive the truth of these words, negative thoughts are going to start to lose their power over you because the power that the negative thought has over you is only because of this emotional response. If there were no emotional response, when you have a negative thought, negative thoughts wouldn't bother you at all. Okay. So, so this is the first issue that really affects negative thinking. And it's the emotional response, the trigger of emotions, especially uncomfortable emotions. That's what really gets people into states of anxiety, fear, guilt, shame, all kinds of, of really dense energies as, as they're being triggered by these negative loops. One important side note here that I wanted to leave is that I want to leave you with an energy alchemy rule to help you understand the role that emotional responses play in negative thinking. And that energy alchemy rule is to remember that emotions are and en simply energy and movement. Okay. So emotions are energy and movement or energy in motion. They just want to keep moving. It's just energy that's circulating around. But when you focus on a negative thought, what ends up happening is that negative thought thought starts to pull on those emotions and pull and pull and pull. And pretty soon you get a cascading event where things just get amplified and completely out of order, you know, like completely, completely out of whack because of that cascading, because of that energy movement, because emotions are energy in, in motion. When I focus on something, all that energy gets sucked into that specific place and it creates a lot of distress within you. All right. So remember this energy alchemy rule that emotions are energy in movement. And that'll help you later on when we're talking about how to stop these negative thinking cycles. The second issue that affects negative thinking is energy momentum. All right. So speaking of energy of emotions being energy in motion, that takes us to this second issue, which is energy momentum. Now energy momentum means that as soon as I focus on something, for example, for the purposes of this video, as soon as I focus my awareness on a negative thought or a negative loop that's going on, on in my head. If I focus my awareness on that negative, uh, that negative thought or that negative loop, I start to draw negative emotions to it. And when I start to draw this energy, it amplifies the energy. And basically the energy creates a lot of momentum. There's a lot of momentum moving forward. The longer I focus on something. All right. And the image that I like to use, the metaphor that I like to use is of an avalanche. All right. So if you've ever seen an avalanche, when it starts, it usually starts at the tippy top of a mountain. And when it starts, an avalanche is quite small. It's just a bit of ice falling from the top. But then what happens? The ice starts to fall. And as it's moving down the hill, it takes the rest of the snow with it. And pretty soon something that started really small at the tippy top of a mountain turns into a life threatening avalanche of just enormous proportions. All right. This image of an avalanche moving down a mountain, this is exactly what energy momentum does. It can start off small, but if you keep your focus and your awareness on that negative thought, for example, it's going to amplify the energy and there's going to create a lot of momentum. And pretty soon you have an avalanche of negative thoughts going on in your head with all kinds of, of dense emotions going along with it. Okay. So this is another important 
important energy alchemy issue because when you realize that energy functions a lot in momentum and then the more I focus on something, the more momentum I create, then you know that you have a choice not to focus on something. The moment that I move my focus away, the energy momentum diminishes, diminishes, diminishes until it's gone. Okay. So another important thing to remember as we get prepared to learning how to stop negative thinking later on in the video. The third issue that affects negative thinking is collective consciousness. This is not talked about uh, as much, but this is a really important issue that I want to bring up here because this is so pertinent for all of us, especially people that are empaths and sensitives. Ding, ding. If you're a sensitive or an empath, this issue here is really, really can affect you. And what I'm talking about when I'm saying collective consciousness is you really have to step out and look at things from a really broad perspective to understand how the world of energy works. Okay. Collective consciousness is really, it just means that although we think that we have our own consciousness, we have our own thoughts, we have our own thought processes that are all just stuck in our heads, in our skulls, and that they're just ours. That's not the case because there is no real barrier between my head and your head <laughs> or my head and the head of 7 billion people on the planet. Okay. There is no real energy barrier. This is so important. And so what collective consciousness is, is it's just an accumulation of the thoughts that everyone is thinking all over the world. So imagine 7 billion people thinking every day creates this big thing called collective consciousness. Everyone is contributing thoughts and energy into the collective consciousness. The way that you can think about it is that you can think about you having your brain that creates thoughts and you got, you got your own brain uh, doing its thing, but then collectively think of it as a really big super brain. There's a really big super brain that we're all plugged into. We contribute to the super brain's thoughts by the thoughts and the energy that we emanate. And so do the 7 billion people all over the world. Now, the reason that I'm saying that this is a particular problematic issue for sensitives and empaths is if you're a sensitive, you're energy is already super open and porous, which means that you can easily tap in to the thoughts and emotions and feelings of the collective consciousness. And you could receive those. And a lot of times you could be walking around and you can have a thought drop on your head and you can say, Oh my God, where did that come from? It came from the collective consciousness, not necessarily from you. This is a really important thing to remember because it's going to help you detach from these thoughts. Cause at the end of the day, whether you have a negative thought that's yours, or you have a negative thought that's from collective consciousness, it's going to really help you understand that, wow, I don't need to get attached to these thoughts because they may be mine or they're may, they, I may be tapping in from collective consciousness. All of this is going on. So it creates this habit of you learning how to see things from a broader perspective and not being just so focused on your human self on what's going on in your head. Okay. So collective consciousness, consciousness, the mood and the thoughts and the energies of collective consciousness really affect us all, especially sensitives. And an example that, that, um, you know, is easy, a pretty recent example was when we had the onset of the COVID pandemic and there were starting to be quarantines all over the place and people really start to shut down and everybody started to get bombarded with fear. There was a huge uptick in the emotion fear in the collective consciousness and I could feel it. And I bet you could feel it. There were millions of people around the world that could feel this as sensitives, they could feel that dramatic shift in energy from one day to the other. Why? Because the collective consciousness got a bit overwhelmed with the emotion fear because there were so many people emitting fear around this topic of COVID that it just spiked the energy up into fear. Okay. So the point here is to remember that you contribute to the collective consciousness with the quality of your thoughts, emotions, and feelings and energy, but others contribute to that collective consciousness also. And if you're a sensitive or an empath, you can easily tap into that collective consciousness. So sometimes the things that you may be feeling or thinking may not actually be coming from you. <laughs> and it's important to remember this because that that allows you to kind of detach yourself from all of these things and, and look at this from a broader perspective. Now, let me give you another practical example to really drive home how, how collective consciousness affects us all. All right. Let me give you a practical example so that you can understand how, how really plugged into collective consciousness we are. All right. Imagine that you are, you go out to participate in a peaceful protest, what, whatever it is, you just, you're scheduled, you go out, you, you grab your friends and everybody goes 
goes to this peaceful protest. You're protesting something. It doesn't matter what. And there are thousands upon thousands of people that are participating in that protest that, that day. And then let's say that someone at the front of the protest, there's a group of troublemakers and they're really angry and they're really upset and they just start to push police and they start to break through barriers and they start to break things and break windows and all of this starts happening. Sometimes what can happen in these situations is that the anger in the people that start this violence and that break from peaceful protest to violent protest, their energy can actually contaminate the rest of the protest group. And pretty soon you can find yourself shoving people on the street when you were really initially just there for a peaceful protest. What the heck happened to you? <laughs> what the heck happened to you in that moment where you went from peaceful protester to shoving police or shoving people? people in the street. It's that you got contaminated by the energy of the rest of the group. Okay. This is an example of what collective consciousness can do to us, especially if we're sensitives and we're empaths, we're really, really, um, sensitive to the energy around us. All right. So here's a practical example of what collective consciousness is in the real world. Um, but now you can see this can play out in any area. It doesn't just have to be a protest. It can happen when you're having a negative thinking loop that you think is coming from your own skull, but it may be that you're tapped into collective consciousness and you're receiving that negative loop because it's a, it's a thought form that's present in that collective consciousness. All right. Just wanted to leave this practical example here. So you can really, uh, can really take home the message of how collective consciousness can really influence us, especially if we're sensitives. Speaking of sensitives and empaths, that's actually uh, issue number four that affects negative thinking is sensitives and empaths. And so you kind of already, I've already been talking about that a little bit, but I want to bring this message home. And that is that if you are a sensitive or an empath, you are more prone to picking up on these negative thought forms, especially if they're highly present and concentrated in the collective consciousness, because as a sensitive, your energy is more open to the world. So you take in and you dance with energy more easily easily than a non-sensitive. So sensitives and empaths can be, and again, I'm using the word can, can be more sensitive to picking up negative thought forms, especially when these sensitives are not in their power and don't know how to use their sensitivities as a superpower. Okay. So if you're not trained and if you don't know how to use your sensitivities and stand in your power, being a sensitive can actually be problematic because you can be receiving these negative thoughts from the outside and not even knowing and it can drive you insane, feel like you're going insane. Okay. So this is the last issue that I wanted to talk about. If you are a sensitive or an empath, it's okay. If you're more sensitive to negative thought forms, that's all right. You don't have to panic. It doesn't mean that you're going to be cursed to have all these negative thought forms just because you're a sensitive. I'm a sensitive too, and I don't struggle with these issues anymore. All right. So again, it's just a question of training training yourself. But if you are a sensitive or an empath, you can definitely be affected by negative thought forms uh, from the collective consciousness and you can pick those up easily. So it's important for you to know this because then you can just easily train yourself on how to work with this energy, move it. So you don't get attached to it. All right. I'm not going to go deeper on sensitives and empaths because I've shot multiple videos, uh, including this one here. So I'm going to leave links to that video in the description box below. You can learn more about empaths and how to train this empathic and sensitivity, uh, as a superpower. So you can watch that video after this one on to part three of the video now, and it's all about how to stop negative thinking. Okay. So I'm going to share a really simple, but powerful five-step process. That's going to help you to kind of, you know, get this, get this negative thinking under control, or, you know, I'm using air quotes because you're going to see in a little bit, uh, that, that negative thoughts may not even be necessary to stop. Okay. So, so here's the, the, the five-step process. The first step is you're going to ask this question. <laughs> okay. So what's the question you're going to ask? You're going to take out a journal and it's important that you take out a journal so that you're actually writing these things down when they, when you commit these things to paper, it's really transformational. So, so get used to using journal and writing things down. All right. So here's the question that you're going to ask and you're going to ponder this and you're going to write down the answer in as much detail as possible. All right. So here's the question. Why do I want or need to stop the negative thinking? <laughs> Why do I want or need to stop the negative thinking? Okay. So this may seem like a dumb question, but think about this, feel about this journal about this. Cause what's going to happen is you're probably going to answer this question in a variation of ways, but 
probably around your answers are going to vary from, I want to stop negative thinking because the thoughts are scary or because the thoughts cause me distress because the thoughts are horrible or violent or distorted or weird. And they just really bother me. There's going to be a variation of responses here. But usually the common denominator here is going to be, I want to stop negative thinking because negative thinking makes me feel like crap or negative thinking makes me feel bad. All right. And what's this bad? What, what is the negative thinking doing? People usually are talking about emotions like fear, distress, stress, anxiety, guilt, shame. Okay. Anger. That's what people are talking about when they talk about negative, uh, negative thoughts, because if negative thoughts were associated with happiness, joy, ecstasy, compassion, nobody would be complaining about negative thoughts, right? You wouldn't even be wanting to stop them. If that's what, if those are the emotions that you had, when you had a negative thought, you wouldn't even be watching this video because you wouldn't have any need to stop the negative thinking. The reason that you have a need to stop the negative thinking is because of the emotional, uh, response response, the emotional content that's being triggered by those thoughts. So it's usually around that sometimes sure. It's about the negative thoughts. Maybe they're violent or they're distressful or they, they're weird. And so people don't like to have those thoughts, but that's pretty much the minority. The majority of people, they don't like to have negative thoughts because of the emotions that are being swirled up in them when they have those negative thoughts. Okay. So ask yourself this question, why do I want or need to stop the negative thoughts? journal about your answer and what you're feeling, what you're thinking journal in as much detail as possible. Just by answering this question, you're already stopping, uh, uh, the, the kind of the negative thinking. Now at the end of the day, uh, really saying to you, here's how you stop negative thinking. That's what people want to do. But at the end of the day, it's really not necessary at all. And in fact, to stop thinking a certain way is really kind of setting yourself up for failure. All right. So if I say to you, I want you to not think about a white elephant, <laughs> don't think about a white elephant. Don't, don't think about a white elephant. If I say this to you, what the hell are you going to be thinking about? You're going to be thinking about a white elephant, right? So when you say to yourself, I want to stop negative thoughts, stop negative thoughts, stop negative thoughts. That's going to be, you're really going to set yourself up for failure. So what this question does is it starts to free you because as you're answering it, you start to realize that maybe you don't need to stop negative thinking. <laughs> you see, maybe you don't need to stop negative thinking. As soon as you start to breathe into this realization, the power that negative thoughts had over you, it starts to completely melt. Step number two is to recognize who you are. <laughs> okay. So when it comes to negative negative thinking, the fact that negative thinking really bothers us so much is really because we're stuck in a level of perception. That's too small. All right. We're stuck in the mind. We're stuck in the mental level of perception, which is really, really small. You have to remember that you are a multidimensional, enormous being a multidimensional, enormous being. And the mental part of you where these, this little part here under your skull, where all these thoughts are going through, that is a tiny, tiny part of who you are just as a comparison, your mental aspect is like a, a drop in the ocean. You're the ocean and the mental part of you is a drop in that ocean. Now imagine the magnitude of this, <laughs> you see, and so when it comes to really healing and kind of stopping these negative thoughts from bothering you, really, when you come into the recognition that I am a huge, enormous, expansive being, and the mental part of me is only a tiny, tiny drop in the ocean. When you see things from this magnitude, again, the negative thoughts will completely lose their power over you because you realize, holy moly, I'm allowing a drop in the ocean to bother my whole day <laughs> when I don't have to, I am allowing my mental aspect to completely control my whole life. And, and I don't need to. Okay. So, so recognizing who you are, this step really just has to do with you broadening your horizons coming out of that really focused and small concentration in your mind and just coming into the multidimensional perspective that you are a huge soul that's in this body temporarily. You've got chakras, you've got an aura, you've got a multidimensional self that's been 
been here so many lifetimes. You are enormous. And the mental aspect of you is really small. And you're going to choose whether you allow that small drop in the ocean to control your life or not. It's a choice. Okay. So step number two, recognize who you are and start stepping in the power, the full power of that knowing, the more that you step into the power of the soul, the more that you see things from a soul perspective, negative thoughts are just, they won't have any more power over you. Okay. So just imagine, imagine if you could close your eyes and just step back into your soul perspective. Imagine at this moment, you can take a deep breath and step back into how your soul sees life. <laughs> The moment that you do that, your, your feelings are going to shift immediately because the soul is just this enormous presence. The soul isn't intimidated by thoughts. The soul doesn't care about negative thoughts or positive thoughts or good thoughts or bad thoughts. The, the soul is observing all of this. <laughs> the soul is observing all of this with just a lot of expansion, a lot of peace and a lot of joy. It doesn't get hung up on one thought versus another thought. Okay. And the more you can step in this expansive soul perspective, negative thoughts will just, they'll just really the, the power that they have over you will completely disintegrate. All right. So, so that's step number two, to recognize who you are and stand in that power. Another way that I like doing this is by using the metaphor of a beautiful, big blue sky, and then the weather patterns passing in it. All right. I love to use this example. So when I take my soul's perspective, I'm literally breathing in and I'm expanding so big, so big that I become the blue sky. I literally become the blue sky. Now, what's the characteristic of the blue sky? The blue sky holds all weather patterns. The blue sky doesn't get freaked out. If there's a thunderstorm passing by <laughs> the blue sky holds it, stays there, observes it and lets it float by whether it's a thunderstorm, whether it's a hurricane, a tornado, or just a nice little white cloud floating through the blue sky is always there. No matter what goes through the sky, whether it's a thunderstorm, a hurricane or whatever, you know, that as soon as that hurricane or that thunderstorm passes, the blue sky is still there. The blue sky is always there beyond the cloud beyond the darkness of the cloud. All right. So this is the expansive position that you could be in using your breath coming into the blue sky. When you feel that negative thought, you just say, wow, here comes a little thunderstorm. That's okay. <laughs> You see, and you just observe it float by. Can you feel this perspective? This is the perspective of the soul that you need to be in, in this step two. And you can cultivate it with a lot of breathing, closing your eyes and just visualization of you expanding your awareness out to the size of a sky, a blue sky, and just watching the thoughts go by, whether they're negative or positive, it doesn't matter. You hold that position of the soul. All right. So this is step number two. Step number three is to understand the nature of thoughts. Okay. So the, this one's going to help you a lot too, because what we're doing here in this step is we're really starting to understand the nature of thoughts so that they don't grasp us so much. All right. And the way that I like to do this is to really equate a thought to a heartbeat. Okay. So a heartbeat is just constantly there, but boom, but boom, but boom. <laughs> Okay. Your heart is just beating constantly. Uh, the human heart beats around a hundred thousand times a day. All right. So that's your heartbeat. Boom, boom, boom. The mind, your brain thinks around 70,000 thoughts a day. So a little bit off, but pretty close, right? So 70,000 thoughts, 100,000 heartbeats. So if you start to really treat your thoughts, like your heartbeats, your whole life is going to change. <laughs> okay. So let, let me get deeper into this. When you're sitting, if I say to you, sit and close your eyes, and I want you to just observe your heartbeat. Okay. You observe, maybe you put your hands and you start observing your heartbeat. Would you ever think to get attached or pay attention to one heartbeat over another? <laughs> you wouldn't, right? There is, there is no one heartbeat that you say, Oh my God, I don't like that heartbeat. That's a negative heartbeat. <laughs> or look that there's a positive heartbeat. <laughs> you see, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think of doing this. You just observe the heart and you just hear it going, ba boom, ba boom boom. And you let each heartbeat go as it's passing by. Well, guess what? You can do the same with your thoughts. You can observe your thoughts passing by just like you observe your heartbeats. You really, really can. You don't need to get attached or drawn into a specific thought versus another. And I know that you can do this because you're doing this already. Okay. So let me explain this. You are already doing this because think about this. If you have 70,000 thoughts going on in your mind every day, 
Did you even know that? <laughs> when I say to people that they think around 70,000 times a day, they're like, no way, <laughs> no, no way. Why do we generally say this? Because we are unaware of like 99.9% .9 of all thoughts going through our heads every day. We're unaware of them. So you see, you're already doing this. You're already doing the kind of just whatever, just keep going. <laughs> you're doing the ignoring, you're doing the detaching. Your brain's already doing that naturally because there's so much information coming into the brain that if it didn't ignore uh, information, you'd go insane. Can you imagine if you actually paid attention and got attached to the 70,000 thoughts thoughts you had every day, you would positively go insane. So you're already doing the work of detaching from the vast majority of thoughts in your head. You just didn't know you were doing that. So now you're going to start doing that more consciously. If you, if you weren't aware that you had 70,000 thoughts a day in your head, now you're going to become aware that in fact, you are doing this work already. You're detaching from the majority of thoughts in your head, and you're just going to go further by starting to detach from the negative ones. Also, <laughs> you're not going to let those pull you in anymore. Okay. So I like using this metaphor, this comparison between the heartbeat and thoughts and being able to cultivate the practice of observing my thoughts, whether they're positive, negative, good, bad, it doesn't matter. Thoughts are just thoughts. They're all the same. I'm going to start observing thoughts in the same way that I observe heartbeats, detached, non-attached, just letting everything go through me, le literally letting everything go through me like the weather patterns in, in a, a clear blue sky. All right. So, so understanding the, the nature of thoughts is really important. The more that you know that thoughts are really like heartbeat, again, the, the power they have over you is just going to completely disintegrate. All right. So sit with this one for a little bit with the idea that thoughts literally that that's all they are. Heartbeats. <laughs> they are heartbeats. I don't have to get stuck on any of them. I don't have to get stuck or attached. I don't have to let those thoughts create emotional responses in me. I don't have to, I don't have to. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. So, so this is another step for you. Now, one side note that I wanted to leave here is just to reinforce the message that I talked about a little bit earlier, um, really saying that, that stopping negative thoughts is not necessary and probably counterproductive because I gave the example of don't think about the white elephant. Okay. So if you remember that, then you'll understand that the whole trying to stop negative thoughts is probably a, a really, a, you're setting yourself up for failure, but here's what's going to happen, uh, kind of indirectly, the more that you detach from negative thoughts, the more that you step into your power, you know who you are. And the more you understand the nature of negative thoughts and the nature of thoughts, you start to detach from them. The moment that you detach from them, really what you're doing is you're removing your awareness, your focus. Okay. What I remove my focus away from, it starts to die down. Okay. So what's indirectly going to happen, even without you, even without you saying, I'm going to stop thinking, that's not the way to go about it. But if you say, I'm going to detach from these thoughts. I'm going to detach from these thoughts. I'm not going to let these thoughts control my life. And you start detaching from them. The more you detach from the thoughts, the more you decrease the momentum in the energy. And the more you do that, the consequence of that is the, the frequency of negative thoughts is going to start decreasing in your head. So at the end of the day, yeah, you are able to stop negative thinking, but it's not because you were focusing on stopping it. It's because you were actually detaching your awareness from it. Okay. So this is a cool little side note. Don't focus on trying to stop it. Just focus on detaching, breathing through, observing, and letting them float by. And as that happens, as you remove the awareness, the frequency of the negative thoughts will decrease, decrease, and decrease. All right. I wanted to leave this side note here because that's exciting. Step four is to step back from the thoughts. Okay. So this one's a little bit harder to explain because this is a really experiential exercise. This is a really experiential part and a really experiential step, but I'm going to try as best I can to, to help you with this step. So what I mean by stepping back from the thoughts, really what I'm saying is another way of saying this is assume the position of your soul more and more. So lean away from the negative thought when it pops in your head. And what I'm, what I'm kind of coaching you to do is creating space between the thought and yourself, your conscious awareness. The more you step back from the thought, the less power it has over you. Okay. And again, this is hard to say in words. You're going to have to, you're going to have to really experience this and train this in yourself. One great way of doing this is through breathing. So 
I breathe in and I step away. I lean away from the thought again, so hard to describe, but I hope you understand what I'm feeling and you're going to learn how to practice this. When that negative thought comes or when those negative thoughts come in, instead of getting sucked into those negative thoughts and feeling all those horrible emotions and getting, getting stuck and getting panicked and all of that, I'm going to actually take a nice deep breath and I'm going to step away from the thought. All right. So I'm trying to show you this. Okay. Now let me give you, let me give you a metaphor of what this looks like. Okay. So you can see practically how this feels. Let's say, pretend that you imagine that you go to an, uh, those really fancy IMAX theaters and you're about to watch a 3d movie and they give you, you know, when you're watching a 3d movie in an IMAX theater, they give you those 3d, those 3d glasses. Okay. As soon as you put those 3d glasses and the movie starts, you're totally pulled into the movie. Why? Because those 3d glasses create the illusion of depth. And so it's like the movie is popping out at you and it could be a little frightening. Sometimes if you're watching a big action movie in an IMAX theater with those 3d glasses on, you're immersed in the movie. It's so much more interactive and immersive. The word here that just, just dropped on my head, immersive. Okay. So you are literally immersing your consciousness in that movie. It's pulling you in. Okay. It's pulling all of your senses in. That's what those 3d glasses and the whole experience of being in an IMAX theater does. Now compare that to, let's say you go and you watch a movie in a really old rickety theater. There's no 3d. The movie is probably even let's pretend it's in black and white and it's as old as it can be. And you're just sitting in a regular old theater and you're watching a black and white movie that's like from the 1930s or whatever. Do you have the same response to that type of movie? <laughs> no, you don't. Why? Because you're further away from the movie. Why? Because that movie is less immersive. It's not immersing you as much as a fancy IMAX 3d movie is. Okay. And this is the metaphor that I want to show you for, for what you're doing when it comes to negative thoughts. Think of negative thoughts as this 3d movie, but you don't need to lean into it and you don't need to put your, your 3d glasses on. You can breathe in and step away from it. The moment that you step away from that 3d movie, if you take your glasses off, I've done this in theaters because sometimes 3d glasses can actually give you motion sickness if you're not used to them. So I've done this multiple times where I'm, I'm in the middle of a 3d movie and it's starting to make me sick. And I take the glasses off. As soon as I take the glasses off, the movie turns normal. <laughs> okay. So you can do that. Don't let yourself get immersed into the negative thoughts. Take your 3d glasses off, take a nice step and move away from the thought. The more that you create space between the negative thoughts and your awareness, the less these, these negative thoughts are going to bother you. So the way that I like to use this specific practice of stepping away from the thoughts, the way that I like to use this, I'll use this sequence. So I'll leave this here to, to help you even further. Cause I know that this, uh, I know that this step is really experiential and you have to practice it on your own. All right. So let me give you the sequence that I used when I was training myself to do this. So the first thing is just close your eyes and then breath using the breathing is so important in creating space between your thoughts and your awareness. Okay. So close your eyes, take a nice deep breath and just literally even lean your body back. These body movements really help. So you can even lean, actually lean your body back a little bit and let that symbolize the moving away from the thought. Okay. Use breathe in lean back and then just observe the thought without judgment. Like you're observing a thunderstorm passing in the sky. Okay. What you're doing here is you are assuming the position of your soul and you're coming into the understanding of how your soul sees things. Okay. Much more expansive view. If you want to bring a mantra uh, to that, that can actually help also, because if I repeat a mantra in my mind or out loud, I'm mantras break, uh, the thinking loops. Okay. Cause if I introduce another thought or if I introduce a mantra and affirmation, it's going to break, break the, the loop, the negative thinking loop that was there. So you can add a mantra, like you can breathe in step back and you can just say, I see with the eyes of my soul. I love this mantra. I see with the eyes of my soul and you just keep breathing. You keep stepping away. You're creating that distance between the negative thoughts or the negative loops and your awareness. The more that you create distance, the less, uh, the less those negative thoughts are going to bother you. Okay. So, so think about the difference between a thunderstorm being a hundred miles away from you versus a thunderstorm being on top of you. <laughs> totally different, right? So the more you breathe and you move away, the negative thoughts are going to be more at a distance. And pretty soon they really won't affect you at all. 
Step number five and the last one is to disperse the energy. Okay. So now that you've gone through the steps, you've know about the nature of thoughts, you're creating some space between yourself and the, and the negative thoughts. Now this final step, you're really just dispersing energy. And the reason that you're doing this is because you already know by the nature of thought that thoughts can magnetize dense emotions. So the more I let myself get attached to the negative thoughts, the more those negative thoughts are sucking in and magnetizing dense emotions like stress, anxiety, fear, all these kinds of things. So I need to disperse that energy in order for these thoughts to just start disintegrating. All right. So the movement of energy, remembering that energy functions like a momentum, the more I concentrate on something, the more energy momentum I have. So if, in order for me to go the other way, I have to disperse the energy so that that energy no longer is affecting me. All right. The way that I like to do this is with a really simple practice again, using breathing. So I'll just close my eyes. I'll focus on my breathing, realizing that if I'm stuck in a negative loop and if negative thoughts are really bothering me, it's because there's probably emotions attached to them. So there's a lot of emotional energy up here in the head area. And so what I do is I just close my eyes. I focus on the head and I literally just visualize. So if you have good visualization skills, this will even be easier for you, but it's okay if you can't visualize, but bonus points, if you can visualize, you're just going to visualize the energy draining from your head down into your body from the head down into the body. And you can visualize this as light. You can visualize this as water. You can visualize it as fire. People visualize energy in different ways. You, there is no right or wrong way. Just visualize the energy dispersing from the head, draining down into the body as you're breathing deeply. Okay. The trick here with the breathing is you want long, deep breaths. The longer and the deeper the breath, the more that energy is going to disperse and the more that negative loop is going to quiet down. Okay. So nice, deep breaths. And then you just visualize the energy dispersing down, down, down into your body. It, the more that you visualize this, the more the energy is going to move again conscious awareness pulls energy with it. So if my awareness is moving energy from here down, the energy is literally going to follow. Okay. So it follows your awareness. And, and I like to finish this off with a little bit of body movement. So you could be sitting, you can sit down in, in meditation position and you could do the initial work of just draining and dispersing the energy down in your body. But then remember to finish the practice off with some body movement, like some dancing. That's easy. Put some music on, get up from meditation. After you've dispersed the energy, get up from meditation and just move around to really complete the practice of energy dispersal through your body. This works really, really well. Uh, you'll be surprised at how well this works. All right. So this is the last step, but it's a really important one. Disperse that energy. So there's no more energy momentum created funneling towards the negative thoughts. Okay. So this is a really simple step on how to move energy, especially emotional energy. Cause really what we're talking about in this step and in, in dispersing energy, what we're really talking about is in dispersing emotional energy, right? Cause that's what really gets us stuck in these negative thoughts. So I gave you this, this, uh, little simple process here. That's really important. But if you want to go deeper on how to work with emotions, how to work with emotional content, if you have issues getting stuck on emotions, I shot a whole video on that and I'll leave links in the description box below so you can watch after this one. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below. If you struggle with negative thoughts, I want to hear all about it in the comments below. And don't forget to download the free supplemental workbook that accompanies this video. That'll really take you further and in, in diving deeper into the content that we discussed today. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website where you can download my popular guided meditations. And don't forget these videos that I mentioned in this video. That'll be great for you to continue viewing. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I'm out.